Welcome to Mighty Married Moms. Join us at our kitchen table twice a week as the Mighty Married Moms, Debbie, Linda, Wendy, invite spectacular guests to weigh in on staying sexy, vibrant, and healthy, building marriages with soul-satisfying connection, raising happy, healthy, successful kids. Conversations with Mighty Married Moms will bring you closer to the life you really want. Episode 75. Today's show is brought to you by Deborah C. Owen, Family and Life Coach at YouCanRaiseGreatKids.com. If you are tired of worrying about the choices your kid is making or tired of the stress of constantly arguing with your kids or them arguing with each other, then don't wait until you are truly desperate. Get the help you and your family need and deserve today. Connect with your kids with calm compassion. Call Deborah Owen at 978-835-4354. Hi everyone, welcome back to Mighty Married Moms. We are really excited today to be able to introduce you to Jen and Ben Rohde, the visionary co-founders of the Rohde Institute. They've also been the creators of the international healing modality called Explosive Sexual Healing. Mm -hmm. They are highly sought after speakers and leading twin flame experts. Mm -hmm. Jen is a much loved spiritual teacher who's featured alongside Deep Deepak Chopra, Marianne Williamson, the Dalai Lama, and Desmond Tutu in the upcoming movie, The Shift. Mm -hmm. Ben and Jen have revolutionized sexual healing, bringing it out of the shadows and into the light of the mainstream. Mm -hmm. They are known worldwide as the premier, premier sexual healers, having a 93% success rate, helping hundreds of women bring in their life partner, and a 98% success rate helping married couples to have the best sex of their lives after being on the brink of divorce. Wow. Because of their explosive success, Ben and Jen have been featured on Salon.com, The Young Turks, Sirius FM, and a whole bunch of other po things, and have even been blasted by Bill O'Reilly. That must be a good yeah, thing, right? Yeah, that's definitely a good thing. <laughs> as well as highlighted by numerous other TV, radio, and news articles. Their passionate mission is to assist strong women in their sexual rep evolution so they can have the happiest relationships possible. Woohoo! Whoa, what a wow. background. We <laughs> are happy to have you here, Jen and yeah. Ben. Thank you. Here, Thanks fun. for having us here. Great. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I know there's a little bit of a story in your background, so can you really quickly just tell us where you came from and how you got to where you are right now, because that's really intriguing. Mm. Yeah, so um, I, guess, I guess I'll start with yeah, my story. Um, I was, uh, you know, when I was 17, I, I've been raised in, in church, you know, and my family's very Christian. And by the time I was 17, I was like, all I want is to be in love and to have a woman to touch me and hold me and love me. And I had no idea what to do with women or you know, <laughs> I, I, that, you know, was Always asexual. Ended up in, the, in the friend category uh -huh. kind of thing. Yeah. And, and so, uh, so then I, I dedicated my life to getting women out and started studying psychology, NLP, hypnosis, self-help, um, sex, sexuality, all that stuff. And then I was in a, I got engaged at, I think, 23, and that relationship fell apart because our sex life stopped working, mm -hmm. and we were sex therapist, and she had no idea what to say, where now, you know, I figured it out, so if somebody came to me with the same issue, I would have said, yeah, do this, this, and this, you know, like two or three different things, and it would have, it would have been perfect, right? Okay. Um, and so that's, you know, so now we have, uh, you know, therapists, psychologists, uh, sex therapists from around the world contacting us for advice and and it feels really really good mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. great um, that's kind of how all of this started and then Jen came in and, and, and took it to the next level yeah and, and so ben, ben and I met about you know a little over three years ago we met and married a, a month later we both knew right away you know the first night we met we knew this is it we're done um, you know, with him a month later we got married a month later it was all kind of logistical and um, and we just kind of merged our businesses and and you know the interesting thing is that you know a little over three years ago Ben was actually a mailman by trade and I was actually a, a school teacher. Mm -hmm. um, both wow. Different modalities and and that we were you know developing and and when we combined them we kind of literally exploded into you know explosive sexual healing and what's now become you know the Rody Institute so um, it, which is a life you know we have many many different you know, work, we hold workshops and licensing programs and um, retreat programs, all different types of things all over the world. So. We have explosive, oh. explosive sexual healing practitioners in oh. Canada and Australia and, and obviously, obviously in the U.S. Yeah. Wow. So this is a, a certification process now. 
the licensing program. Licensing, licensing program. Great, nice. great. And we're speaking to you now down in Costa Rica as you're putting together all of this. Um, tell us a little bit about what, uh, what's going on in Costa Rica. Yeah, so we're, we're creating an amazing healing retreat center and a place mm -hmm. where all of, so a, a lot of our friends are leaders in their, in, in, in their industry, in the mm -hmm. self-help industry, helping people live the best lives, have the best relationships, make money, live their life purpose. Um, just, I mean, people doing revolutionary things to help people get out of the, their rut. And, and so we want these, we're creating a community of these individuals to live here and have a destination retreat place where people can fly in, where we've got 10 families, 10 leaders and their families living here. Jen's creating a school, mm -hmm. um, a completely revolutionary school where the kids are learning outside and learning mm -hmm. about learning, you know, the important stuff. Yeah, and that's really self-directed by the children as well. I think that's really important to actually let the children do a lot of self-direction and letting them follow, you know, what they want to learn rather than forcing learning on them, which obviously isn't working anymore. <laughs> it does, yeah, it kills, yeah. it kills the love of learning, yes. Yeah. Yes, it sure does. <laughs> yeah. Talked about that yeah. actually about 15 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, so right now we're, like, we're actually on an airstrip at a five-star, it was a five-star resort. That is just, it's amazing. Perfect vacation. Mm -hmm. We're planning a couples retreat for, for married couples mm -hmm. um, for, for January. And that is, you know, this is where we're going to be hosting everyone. Is, I mean, I, let, let me see if I can even show you the. It is cool. I mean, so oh, my gosh. Look at that. That's beautiful. So these are all the little casitas. Yeah. So they're, little, they're like. They're oh, big. So yeah. So right now, it, we're, it's a 900-acre resort, mm -hmm. and we are literally the only people staying here. There are 50, 50 of oh, these wow. homes on the property. There's probably about 20 or 30 staff, um, and they're just, you know, everywhere you go, there are three people or four or five people waiting on you hand and foot trying to help. And <laughs> I want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so what's, what's, the purpose? Be there. Yeah. Yeah. what's the purpose of the uh, retreat for married couples in January? What can you tell us about that? <laughs> Oh, um, the, so it, so it, it's going to be a retreat for, for high achievers, right? So for people that they've, they've already, they're very successful, they've done everything that they need to do in life. And, and you know, one thing that they kind of want to focus on now is like, how do I get the deepest and how do we have the best sex? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, we're doing, we're going to be doing everything from connection exercises to teaching the man how to do orgasmic hypnosis. To practicing role play, to, I mean, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be everything from some of the woo-woo, so some breath work with kundalini energy, and really how to experience, you know, these kind of ecstatic states in a really natural, fun way. And to be, huh. to be able to hypnotize his wife into orgasm. Yeah. Oh my goodness wow. gracious. Wow. That, that sounds, sounds pretty great. cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as, as, as women sitting here, we all think that sounds pretty great. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. I can do a demo right now yeah, if you want. Yeah. <laughs> it it's like, yeah, can we do a demo? Can we do that now? <laughs> here, right, here, right. How long do we have? Uh, yeah. I can do it. <laughs> You know, let's let's actually dive into this whole issue a little bit, and and I'll be honest, this is a first for um, our listeners. We haven't had a conversation about sex with Mighty Married Moms before, and it's high time that we do, right. because yeah. um, you know this is part of what being married, right? And in many cases, it's part of being single too. So um, let's let's ask you if if a couple wants to be more comfortable with their sexuality and boost their relationship in general, what kinds of things do you recommend mm -hmm. for people who are not in Costa Rica? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, where, where do we start? You know, the, the first thing I would say is that, you know, Ben is just constantly courting me. He's constantly courting me. And we're really kind of doing this with each other. We're constantly, like, we don't take each other for granted, you know. And it, it's, it's just something that is just ongoing and just part of our way of being. Um, so, you know, Ben is constantly telling me, like, even just, I think, five minutes ago, he was, like, courting me. And, like, he was, like, telling me about, you know, me laying in bed naked and, like, you know, so beautiful and I think about you and he's just he's just constantly you know so one of one of our things is that you know we don't we don't believe that the the, the what do you always say the courting or the the sex actually is going you the, know the, the four four, the play four play starts. Mm -hmm. like, yes the foreplay starts as soon as sex ends so I mean all day long we're we're in foreplay we're flirting we're having fun we're doing different things we're trying different things we had sex outside you know all over the grounds for like an hour yesterday we're on 900 days. it's like a yeah. it's like a luxury ghost town we yeah. used to have sex <laughs> <Yeah. with her. laughs> so, 
you know, so we're, we're, we do, we do a lot of play and we also have a lot of, you know, especially the first few months of our marriage were really, really challenging. We got married very quickly. We didn't know each other. And so we <laughs> a lot of, yeah, so we, we were like this and blaming each other and, and all of that kind of stuff. And, and so we developed a lot of exercises really around, you know, mirror work, but really, really around seeing that person as a mirror, as a reflection, what's going on with them. Um, how is it going on with me? What's going on with me? Processing that out, healing it, healing it in ourselves. So we do both a lot of play with fun and, all, you know, a lot of play with. Yeah. So, I mean, anytime processing. you're in a relationship where I mean, you're going to get triggered, mm -hmm. it happens, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, you know, and yeah. So as a, you know, you can either blame the person and say, you're doing this. It's your fault. You know, I mean, even if it is something they did, right. But if by, by me taking responsibility for something that she did, gives me my power back. And so I can say, okay, he did this. What is it that I did that created this? Right. Mm -hmm. This And where is it a mirror inside of me? And what do I need this? to heal? And so what can I heal so that it never happens again? So that when I clear it for myself, it clears from her doing it. And, you know, it, it, it's just, it's amazing. And then also the, the other piece that's super important is just to, so what often happens in a lot of our, our married clients that, that come in, and say, look, I want a better relationship. We're on the verge of divorce. You know, like what, what's happened is they've been married for 20 or 30 years. And at some point they stopped um, trying, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. They got, they got into their patterns. And they mm -hmm. kind of, you know, go separate ways. Now they're over here. Now they're like, how do we get back here? They're just so far apart. They don't know how to get back. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, you know, relationships aren't something you work on every once in a while or, or you work on when things are broke. It's something that's every second of every minute of every day. And if we're on opposite sides of the house and I haven't seen her in an hour, I'm yelling, I love you. I miss you. Or we're texting each other from the other he's, side he's, of the house. He'll text me, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> like if we were courting or something and lived in other places, he'll like sext me, you know. Yeah. So it's a focus on what do I love about her, not what do I want to change about her or what's wrong with her. Like right. what? The more that she feels perfect in my presence, the more that she will be her amazing, vibrant self. And that's what every, every man wants is for his woman to be the happiest, most vibrant version of herself. So, yeah, that, that keeps the love alive. Yeah. You're not the first to say that, that men's, one of their primary motivations in their romantic relationships is to see their woman happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard that before too. Yeah, Tony, get, Tony Robbins says the same yeah, thing. Yes, he did. Well, many, many, many do. Yeah. Many people do. And and I I would love to be now that I'm talking with somebody rather than just reading it off a page. What is what's what's your grounding or your basis to make that assertion, other than experience or something? But is there some sort of neurological, you know? Oh, oh it's that. Um, that you know, that's a good. I I think. I think it's a man's like it's a man's wiring to want to provide, to want to be the best, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to be the best. So we're the best. I want to be the hero. I want to be the hero. Yeah, right? I want to know the hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, so, so she is my my reflection. What's that? She is a reflection of whether you're heroic or not. Exactly. Does that makes sense. Then I'm not doing my job. If she's happy and glowing and having the best life ever, and I get to bring her to Costa Rica, and you know, I mean, we've been to Costa Rica three, three times, times in the last five, five months. months. I mean, we spent a total of over five months of a month in Costa Rica, and you know, I mean, we're we're living our dream right now, and she's happy, and she's you know, she gets to meditate every day and relax and swim in the pool, and 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 and, and I mean, she's. Her, her meditation is her job mm -hmm. because she goes and she brings in information that we take into our business. That's why we're here mm -hmm. is because she meditated, did some research, found out Costa Rica is where we need to be, and here we are. And, I mean, you look at her journals. She comes out of meditation, writes her journals, <laughs> and she, she wrote some symbols on her journals. Then we go to this property, and, the, and he's showing us around, and there are these symbols on the property. Wow. This, it happens all the time. And so – it is my job to run the masculine side of the business and, you know, the doing, and she runs the receiving side of the business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. some people are really, really intuitive, and, and I know, Jen, that you're especially intuitive, and that's something, you know, a slight divergent tack, if you don't mind. I mean, I would love to know because um, 
that's something that I, I'm interested in is, is intuition. And, and is there anything that mm. an average person can do to kind of boost their own intuition? What can we look for? Use that too. Absolutely. I, that's such a great question. I feel like so, you know, women are, women and men both are highly, highly intuitive. And, and I believe that in shut our, it off. I'm sorry. And very often we shut it off. Yes, yes. I mean, if you look at children, you know, I look, I worked with children for years and children are naturally highly intuitive, right? And so, yeah, we shut it down, we cut it off, we choose not to listen to it, right? And our whole culture is kind of wired that way. And I, and I feel like it's shifting, you know? Um, but I, I truly believe that everyone has, has the, the capability, the innate capability to be highly intuitive and that it actually is our natural state and that when we're actually really balanced in our lives, that that is something that it's not even something necessarily that we have to work on. I mean, it can give some things to do, you know, because people like action steps. But really, it's our natural state. So when we're balanced and when we're in harmony with ourselves, it actually comes through very, very naturally. Um, and the other thing is, is having the opportunity and the space to be able to use your intuition mm -hmm, without mm -hmm. fear of getting it wrong mm -hmm. or I wonder if I'm right, like, I mean, we've all been conditioned to, you know, feel shame and guilt and be wrong. And, and, and so, like, I mean, when you get a gut feeling, you know, there's, like, the voice gets involved in, in the head. And the voice is like, well, what if it's not? Or are you probably overreacting? Or, you well, know, there's usually, like, usually if, if a woman thinks her husband's cheating on her, he probably is. Yeah. Even though she doesn't look at it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Women's intuition is typically right. And, um you know, so the, the more, another thing that I found with, so a lot of the women that we work with, again, are high achievers, they're six, sometimes often multiple seven figure, you know, clients and, and women and they own their own businesses. And even if they're not, they're women that are used to, maybe they're used to just running their own household, right? Which is, you know, a full time serious job in and of itself. Absolutely running your household, right? Yeah. And just to kind of micromanaging and controlling everything. And so for a lot of women, even taking, you know, 12 minutes a day, um, to meditate and have time for themselves or to maybe do yoga or some type of, you know, Tai Chi or some type of spiritual practice, whatever that is for them, it can be really, really hard for them to like, like, you know, I, I have a lot of our clients will say, you know, I'll tell them, you know, you need to meditate every day. You know, this is actually going to help you be more balanced. It's going to help you be more directed in your business. It's going to help um, you be a better parent, it's a better wife. You, right. And it's, and it's actually going to bring more ease and grace into your life because you're, you're going to know which move to make. You're not going to be spinning your wheels, right? But for a lot of women, it can be really hard to be like, oh, my God, I'm taking time for myself. Is this okay? And, and then they'll find themselves in meditation, but they're like, their head's still going, Right. Um, and I'm so, a bad mom. Right, I'm a bad mom, I'm should I be doing so this, and I don't have the time, and, um, you know, so, but I do, I really, really recommend, um, I teach a whole course on meditation, but the, the, you know, some of the, some of the things that I found, and I've done a lot of research on this as well, is that, you know, if we even spend, if, if people even spend 12 minutes a day, but every single day, um, in meditation, in meditative space, um, that creates major, major shifts. I mean, scientifically, like, yeah. like benefits, um, you know, major, like the, your telomeres, uh, mm. even shifting, um, you know, more sleeping better. I mean, just all of, all of these different things, more clarity, all these different things start to come through. Being tapped in your intuition. Being tapped in. So, I mean, you know, for many, you know, I, I always, I, I will spend often hours a day meditating, but it's something I've been doing for a very, very long time. But I mean, I always tell people, even if you could start with, you know, 12 minutes a day, that would make a huge, huge, huge difference. Um, and it, it really does create more balance. And I mean, it, what, what Ben and I do, you know, he does, he does most of the work and the action and stuff like that. Um, I'm doing more of the imagining and the dreaming and the, the kind of directing, okay, we're going here now, we're going here now, and it actually creates a lot more ease. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, it seems like culturally we've become this culture of um, we have to be on, 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 go, 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 go all the time, right? We're always in that fight or flight place in our brain, breathing shallow, not breathing deeply, you know, that whole thing, and we, and we really value that as a culture. We yeah. value this, we like, work, 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 work. So do yes. you feel like... Um, you know, we don't give credibility to meditate. Oh, come on. That's not really, you know, I'm just going to sit there for 12 minutes doing nothing and, you know, trying to think about that's nothing. Not productive. It's not really productive. <laughs> right. And, and do you feel like that's that, uh, you know, psychology feeds into our sexual relationships too, right? If we can't be, um, present in the moment, um, if we're not meditating, if we're not in tune with our intuition, we're not going to be able to have great sex. 
Exactly. Absolutely. We we have one one woman who she's a you know she has a seven figure business and she comes in. We're like you have to meditate and she's like, what's the ROI on meditating? Yeah. What's the, oh, what's the oh my on? goodness. Oh, God. I is, want cats. Yeah. Is this like like am I actively going to achieve to bring in more money into my business by meditating? And we're like, absolutely. Yeah, actually. Like, that's the most important thing you can do right now. Yeah shave off hours of your day by getting clear and getting clarity and, you know, getting tapped into exactly what we're supposed to do. And yeah, it's the same thing. It's these, these you know, these, these you know, it, it, we, we've created a culture of, you know, keeping people engaged, right? I mean, TV is like, boom, 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 right. boom, boom. Overstimulation. Ads everywhere, lights, flashing, sound, music everywhere. Mm-hmm. And so when you get into a quiet place, it's kind of like, what's going on? Like, should I yeah. be doing it? Like, more should <laughs> right now and it's actually like resetting your system right i mean it, it can actually like reset your whole energetic system your physical body right? yeah and so then you know so so like going to make love mm-hmm. you know it's like we're kissing and but we're kissing and we're like should i be should like, i be doing <laughs> um I mean, I, yeah your, about your calendar your schedule the meetings your kids the dry cleaning what am i doing tomorrow oh i forgot to take the dishes out you know, I mean, like, I mean, yeah. our brain will give us the most insane stuff to think about. I mean, we'll, yeah. like, brain, our, the voice in our head will tell tell you exactly what you need to hear to avoid going deeper into intimacy. Right. And, and, and what we teach people is that, so the sessions we do are three-hour sessions. The first hour and a half is clearing out the pain, clearing out the blocks, clearing mm-hmm. out the anger, the resentment, everything that's keeping, right. you know, a couple from fully being close and intimate and connected and the second half is teaching her how to receive Mm -hmm. how to you know we call it we say it's like getting your phd and receiving Mm -hmm. right Mm because you know we're giving and it's about it's about connection right Mm -hmm. with with her partner and and so um there's and it's also how to receive more money in your life how to receive more intimacy how to receive more connection it's all Mm -hmm. in it with our sexuality mm-hmm. it's, it's I'm, I'm finding it very fascinating because i grew up uh, i won't tell you how old i am but i grew up in an era where the the in college my college years the common a common phrase was a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle right, right. and it was this whole there's this we're coming out of i'm very grateful for the fact that we're coming out of a place of Women good, men bad. Women, uh, men on television are, perce- are, 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 are portrayed as buffoons yep. in, in, a, in, a, in a family situation. They're always like, ooh, b- yeah. Yeah, b- bumbling yep. idiots, you know, or even, even rom-com movies or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's really upsetting to me. And, yep. um, and what I'm hearing you say is that there is something that we, we lost sight of as a collective, which is that there are gender differences that when combined make for a very interesting life and a very you know and that when we tap into that and there is great power in that feminine receptive place and somehow the message got given to us that feminine women should be you know out there and making and finding out that ROI and being very you know in your face and whatever and 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 lost there's a loss in our collective world of that feminine energy. And I'm so glad that, I mean, you guys are very young compared to me. I'm so glad that it's coming back into something that, you know, and you've used the word married 75 times. You haven't (laughs) said couples. You haven't said committed couples. You've said married. I also find that very interesting. And um, I'd like to hear more about why married versus committed couples. But anyway, uh, uh, mostly I just wanted to just highlight the fact that it's really wonderful for me to hear the ev- elevation of what women are naturally predisposed to to be mm-hmm. um, offered up here. I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. You. I mean, so, so what happened in history was, you know, uh, the, you know, chauvinism wanted to, you know, ruin the feminine, right? Which is the ego masculine. The ego masculine. Mm-hmm. And it, right. Right, and so then what happened is the women said no, 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 and then they went into reverse chauvinism, yeah. right? Ego, masculine side of women. Yeah, so it, it wasn't it wasn't her being her like a woman in her divine feminine will engulf chauvinism and destroy <laughs> like it. Like fire, she's a woman in her divine feminine is like a freaking 
you know, tornado. She's like, bam, I'm, I, she doesn't need to do this. She'll just, no. wow, you know? That's right, that's right. And to get, to get very graphic about the sexual nature, isn't that the fear of sticking a penis into a vagina? Is it, where's it going to go? <laughs> And it will I ever get it back? Oh my! Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I've read that in book. You know, you I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, that's part of the 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 the. the there's a, it's ultimately vulnerable for a man to go. I hope I get it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and also it, it's you know it, when you're with a powerful woman, when you're with a woman in her power. So it, so for the men, it's like careful what you wish for. It's like I want my woman to be in in her power. I want her to be vibrant. I want her to be tapped in. And when you have that woman, she holds your ass accountable, yeah. right? Like there's, I mean, the, so if yeah. I'm taking love to her, penetrating her, and I'm not giving her exactly what she wants, she lets me know immediately. And she has to, right? We mm -hmm. call it external state directly represents the internal state. Because if she doesn't let me know exactly what she wants, exactly when I'm, when she wants it, and, and, and or if she fakes orgasm or pretends she likes it, right. she's you know she's training me. Oh, yeah, how I'm actually to, teaching him how to how not to do give me an orgasm. Right, right. So, mm -hmm. oh, and so back to your question, Neil. Why are we? Why do we say married instead of couples? Or yeah, because we're on a podcast called the Mighty Married Moms. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> Is that true? Uh, we miss we missed what you said, Jen. Say it again, please. Oh, I, I just said we do work with a lot of committed couples too. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Most of our, so 60% of our clients are looking for their life partner. 40% of our clients are, are, are partnered in a long, in a long-term partnership yeah. um, and looking to make that better. Mm -hmm. um, so married or committed or, you know, uh, you know, what's it called? New domestic partnership, yeah. you know. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Okay. I just was curious. So thanks. Yeah. All it, um, so, you know, some people talk about soulmates or twin flames. Like we've, you know, there's so many different definitions and so much confusion about, you know, what is that stuff even? And so we've created our own definition, our own word called sovereign partnership, which is a couple that wants to live in their world, in their reality, live life the way that they want to live, not based on anything that your parents told you to do or the way that your parents lived. And it's a it's a, yeah, it's really a partnership of co-creation and a partnership where you want to grow, grow together spiritually, emotionally, physically. You know, so for instance, Ben and I are, you know, we're, we are, you know, we're married. We're also co-parents. We also obviously live together. We also are business partners. We're also, you know, we have all of these different facets to what we do. And with together, what we co-create together all of that we're really helping each other to grow spiritually and I want I want the spiritual partner on the spiritual path with me right so it's kind of a different model than kind of the old model you know a lot of our you know I, I know for instance even my parents model was you know he he goes to work and, sh and does this she stays you know yeah, yeah. children you know they both spend eight or nine hours apart all day then she makes dinner then you know he comes home and eats dinner, then they watch TV, and then they go, you know, so it's where this is like a very different, you know, we're constantly helping each other to grow spiritual direction. So, yeah, so everybody like, you know, wants to find the one. And then once they find the one and they get married, then you leave the one every day for eight hours, 10 hours. Like I, I found the one. I don't want to leave the one. I want to be with my one. I love this woman. I know what I want to be apart from her. You would have to kill me, Aww. literally have to take my life, <laughs> I, like it, to be apart from her for eight hours a day is insane. I, I, I mean, unless I'm, either. you know, traveling, you know, t to LA or something and, and coming back that night or something, but like for every day, absolutely not. You would literally have to put me in the ground. I will, you know, like trying to put a cat in a bathtub. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Great analogy. Yeah. yeah. Great analogy. Yeah. Well, go ahead. oh, I just wanted to, oh gosh, we're, okay, go ahead, ask your last question. Well, I just <laughs> wanted, I was um, just curious of the age uh, of, you know, your clients, are most of them young, are they in the middle, older, what would you say, people who are seeking this kind of healing and who are recognizing that they need more in their relationships? Mm -hmm. our, our clients are, you know, they're anywhere from late 30s to mid 50s. Mm -hmm. Um, our oldest client that we've ever had was 76. 76. Oh, she was badass. Her. She just she killed it. I I'm I 
I'm not, I'm, there's, there's a story, an amazing story that, that like will blow your mind <laughs> going right now. Uh -huh. but killed it. She was a firecracker. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. Like she, she's our example. Or if anyone says, any woman says, I'm too old or I can't, or we're I'm like, I'm going through menopause. This woman. Yeah. yeah. She, she was Anyways. Amazing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's it. Very great. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I hate to say it, but we are well out of time. And um, this has been a phenomenal opportunity to be able to yeah. have our kitchen table conversation with Jen and Ben Rohde of uh, the Rohde Institute and the, um, the Explosive Sexual Healing. So creators, creators of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Is there anything thank else? You. I mean, we, we kind of did it early on. You've got this retreat coming up in January. We'll make sure we get this out there long before then. Where can people find you? Is there anything else you want to share with us? Go ahead and plug your stuff. Yeah, so you can find, uh, our, you can find us on uh, rodeinstitute.com. It's spelled like road, R-O-D-E, institute.com. And um, you can learn more about explosive sexual healing at eshealing.com, like es, like explosive sexual healing.com. And you can also find our practitioners from the website that are, you know, uh, all over the place. Um, and, and, and I also just want to say to anyone out there who's like hearing about this and it sounds kind of weird or freaky or, you know, whatever, explosive sexual healing, even the name sometimes can be a lot for people. Um, I just encourage you that if you're feeling a pull or feeling a call at all, please reach out to us. Please connect with us. Mm. You know, or if you're feeling resistance, it may be a sign to... Or if you're feeling to... resistance, reach out to us. Please connect with us. Um, there's nothing too weird. There's nothing we haven't heard. Um, you know, <laughs> no judgment. And um, you know, we'd love to... 100% confidentiality. 100% confidentiality. I'm happy to offer a complimentary phone call with any of the Mighty Married Moms listeners. Yeah. And, you know, oh, thank you. Yeah. Terrific. That's awesome. So thank you so much. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, put all these links in the show notes so that people can find you because this is really great. And yeah. um, Jen and Ben, we're going to let you get back to your two tiny little children. The most recent is two months old, which is really exciting. So thank yeah. you for taking time away from them to be with us today. And, yeah. and also time away from your trip in Costa Rica. We're planning to come visit, yeah, for sure. Definitely. definitely. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you, everybody. You've been listening thank to you. the Mighty Married Moms. Please find us at MightyMarriedMoms.com. Please share with your friends and family. And we would really love it if you could give us a rating and review on iTunes. That would be great because it helps other people find us more easily. Absolutely. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Mighty Married Moms. Tune in twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays to meet fascinating and inspiring guests who will help you create the life you've always wanted. You can find these episodes and special gifts just for you at MightyMarriedMoms.com as well as a link to our Facebook community where we continue the conversation around the kitchen table. Please also help share the love by leaving a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.